everyone, welcome to another rendition of XGR, XPAM Gaming Radio. I am your host this week, Chris, aka The Mole, joined as usual by Anastasia Laserbeam, aka Pew Pew. Woo! Hey! Uh, and Richter the Hammer. Hello. And we will be d- discussing the news, then catch up with the games we've played this week, and then we're going to discuss... A little bit of extra thing on the like a topic, which uh, this week it's High Rule Warriors. So yeah, you got that. First up, news, bong, bong, news. Take us away, Richter. Right. All right. Uh, first up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Trying to make it sound official, like news night. Oh. When they do the bongs at the time. Do oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> 720, do you know where your news is? <laughs> oh, man, that's <wow. laughs> Um, I forgot about those. <laughs> those old commercials. It's 9 o'clock, do you know where your children are? Anyway, it's XGR time, do you know where your news is? Right here. <laughs> so, uh, over the, uh, a few days ago, the Eep It Salute... Did... Hmm? <laughs> Yes, I was. Is your news <laughs> right here? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a few days ago, uh, Operation Supply Drop had their third annual 8-bit salute, uh, 24-hour charity gaming marathon, uh, where it basically raises money to uh, to fund uh, Operation Supply Drop, which uh, basically has returning troops, uh, has them play some video games, you know, to help them cope with all the stuff that they've been through. And uh, on the site, it was uh, basically attacked by a denial-of-service attack. So it's like, yay, thanks, hackers, for trying to stop a charity drive. Like, yeah. <laughs> will, Good job on trying to look sympathetic there. I will say, I disagree with the hacking of the charity. That Whoever did that's a dick. I just wanted to... I, I just couldn't... I just giggled a little bit when you mentioned it's for people who have been in wars and stuff. And I'm like... Yeah. And they're going to give them video games, but the predominant video game type right now is shooters. That's kind of inappropriate. <laughs> well, I don't think they give them actual shooters. I think they give them other stuff. <laughs> that'd be like amazing. Call of Duty. Oh, flashbacks! <laughs> hey, wait, I, think I knew that dude. No, he blew up again. Oh, the irony. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. Like, the Call of Duty, you know. But this is unrealistic. I can, I'm trained, and I can't hold my breath underwater that long. Like... <laughs> No, yeah, I'm pretty sure no that would rush. defeat the purpose to give them that. <laughs> I mean, my wife worked with a guy that uh, if you pop bubble wrap around him, he would have, you know, like, flashbacks. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure they wouldn't give them Call of Duty. <laughs> that would they give him Monkey Ball. Oh, God, there, can you imagine yeah. what the hell he'll do if he ever meets one of those West Side Story gangs that are constantly clicking <laughs> their fingers? <laughs> <laughs> the Jets and the Sharks. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I just made that reference. <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> I was thinking Adam's family, you know, they're snapping. But yeah, so that was my first uh, first mini news. Mini news. Over to the woman with the head as large as the Death Star. Pew pew. <laughs> I think cute lasers would be cool. Pew. All right, so. So many news. Um, basically, the same people who are uh, working on the game control, GameCube controls, are making like similar controls for Smash Brothers Wii U. So it'll play like I'm guessing on the Pro Pad. Um, it'll play like the same as the GameCube, which will be awesome. Aren't they bringing out a GameCube controller? Well, they have like a wired fight pad for the Wii U, but I imagine that, um, if they didn't use the Pro, it'd be stupid too. So they have to at least, you know. Yeah, they'll they'll use the Pro, but I heard they're bringing out a GameCube pad for the Wii U at the same time as Smash Brothers, so that when you play it, it'll be like you're playing with a GameCube pad. And I'm like, but the Pro pad, it's yeah. perfect and it looks nicer. And it, it feels a really good. So, yeah. Like, um, but I'm just hoping that as long as it works the Pro Pad, I'll be fine. But you can get the new pad for, like, 30 bucks or 24.99, you know? But, like, seriously, the Pro Pad's great. So as long as you make the Pro Pad work the same way, you can give it a shit. Fair enough. And my, awesome. mini, my mini news this week. 
Far Cry 4 creator director Alex Hutchinson has actually addressed the controversy about Far Cry 4's box art. I assume we all know about that. I don't know what the controversy is, you have to tell me. I saw the picture, but I didn't know the, what the... The box central image features a light-skinned, blonde-haired man sitting on a... I think it's like a desecrated statue, and his mm-hmm. hands on top of the head of a dark-skinned man. So people have been like, racer! <laughs> <laughs> to which he's responded, just so it's clear for those jumping to conclusions, he's not white, and that's not the player. <laughs> Which, yeah, that's kind of stupid, because from what I understand... Whoa. I don't know what that was. That was loud as fuck. And intrusive. But yeah, I was going to say, basically it was a case of... From what I understand, he's the bad guy. And people are complaining the bad guy's racist. Why? Does that make you hate him? Oh, wait, you're supposed to. He's the fucking bad guy! (laughs) Oh... Oh, people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, could, I mean, I could understand, like, if the main character was, like, in a white hood and was, like, actually going around killing black people <laughs> or something like that. Yes, controversy, that would be bad. This is a guy who you're supposed to hate and bring freedom to the people, which means he's going to be racist. He's going to be a, dip, uh, what do you call it, a uh, dictator and stuff like that. I don't see why you'd complain. He's a <laughs> villain. <laughs> if anything, it shows racism is bad. You're supposed to hate him. Exactly, but uh, that was my mini news. Over to Rick again for his massive news. Massive. Mega news. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> going with uh, news, which was the, uh, which is kind of bullying, also t- segues into uh-huh. a new game that showed up on Kickstarter. It's going on Called... your first news. Please tell me this time charity workers have interrupted hackers. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Not just the theme of bullying. But uh, uh, on Kickstarter they added a new game called Sumo Boy, which basically tackles the uh, <clears throat> excuse me emotions associated with bullying and the anti-bullying movement, is a quote from their page. But um, it's yeah. a basically... Oh, yeah, it's a stylized adventure game where you play as basically this overweight kid who... Um, Learns that his parents were like uh, some kind of like powerful beings. Like I think one of them was like a, like his dad was like a giant warrior or something like that. But uh, he basically learns to fight bullies, and the bullies actually take the form of demons, which is, sounds pretty cool. And uh, sounds like actually a neat basis for a game. That is actually kind of cool. Sounds kind of kind of intelligent for once. Yeah. Not just as a demons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it sounds like, oh, what was that, Papa and Yo, where the father took the place of the giant, like, rhino monster thingy? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like Foster's home for imaginary friend. Oh, wait, no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was joking. Alright. But over to you, Pew Pew, for your news to the power of ten. Okay. So, Wolfenstein. Yeah. It's, like, super friggin' awesome. Woohoo! But, like, sad and face. Thank you for sad... that news. What? <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for the news. Wolfenstein was awesome. Now my mecha news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Was there more? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, okay, continue. Okay. So, um... And Wolfenstein has a bit of had a uh, bit of problems with the PC and um, PS4 running and installing. Unfortunately, like and it's just started, and, and they had a four gig patch for the PS4 one. And unfortunately, sometimes it says uh, it'll, it's completely downloaded, but it'll still be downloading. It won't give you like a progress bar. And the only way to check that it's still downloading is to go to your information. And sometimes you have to reinstall it, which kind of, like, sucks for PS4 one. And it's not often, so, but... As for the... Um, as for the PS- PC one, the, uh, it has problems with the AMD Catalyst software in there, and it can mess up and stuff. So, you know, with your graphics cards and stuff, if you have to get around it or have an additional piece of software to fix it or whatever 
So it just has a few starting up bugs that'll prevent you from playing the game. But I'm sure they're going to fix it, so... So which would be awesome. So, yeah. And it just got started, and they did release a day one patch for the PS4 one, but... I don't know. I, I, I'd imagine that they would, like, fix it. I it would like hope. It has a lot of potential, so it'd be waste if they didn't. I'd imagine they'd fix it, but I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't. Only because nowadays there are too many developers that are just like, ah, fuck it, glitch by next year's game. Well, let's uh-huh. be fair. It's Bethesda, so even if they patch it, it probably won't actually fix it. It'll just break something else. <laughs> like Hitler will have his head spin around and spit well, green said that or something. At least that may be with the PC one, but they said with the PlayStation 4 one that it's actually that whole download play thing. Sony or whatever, mm. it's not like actually part of the game. It's like that whole you can download like part of it, but then play the game right away. Even though mm. it tells you it's installed, it tells you that um the part that it needs to be installed to play it is installed. They won't tell you the, the full thing is installed Fair unless enough. you put information. Fair enough. And I'll be honest with the PS4. Whenever it says something needs to download, I don't do the thing of, but I want to play it now. I click download and I just go do something else. <laughs> yeah. At least that's me. I understand some people will do do actually do the I wanna play it now and click the play thing now, but I'm like it's download. I kind of expect to click download and then go do other shit. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't have to go to the progress bar of the download to see the download. You have to go to information of the game like in the game library. Yeah, to see that which is weird. So you would think like, okay, it's been an hour, it says it's downloaded, I'll play it now, but it's not. <laughs> Fair enough. It's um, awkward place. And I will say my mega news. In the wake of what was reported in, I think it's called Variety, basically the Wall Street Journal has publicized its own report supporting rumors of Google's talks to acquire Twitch, uh, Twitch TV. It claims the deal is far from complete, citing unnamed sources familiar with the matter. The report states that the decisions are in early stages and a deal isn't in- imminent and Twitch have yet to comment, but it looks like it's going to go through. For those unf- unfamiliar, the other news, because it's part of it, is Variety said Twitch is going to be bought by YouTube for more than $1 billion. Q Richter doing the Dr. Evil finger. And it's a billion dollars. Thank you. Sorry. I knew you'd have to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't understand this part, though. It says YouTube is reportedly expecting tough questions though from the justice department because the justice department apparently believe and that just sounds like a fucking poor man's justice league the justice (laughs) department but no (laughs) they've been complaining about anti-competitive practice considering both youtube is like the number one thing for videos and twitch is meant to be the number one for game streaming so it's like both are meant to be the top in their fields you can't own two top things in their field. It's anti-competitive. And I'm like, but that's the point. <laughs> the point is the big companies want to own everything that's good. Why should it be competitive? They have the money to fund it and make it bigger. Why should it be competitive? I don't get that. Well, you get against monopolies? Because no. monopolies is usually pretty bad. <laughs> it's worked for WWE. Oh, wait, no, they're going yeah. bankrupt. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, I tried to, after that news came out, I tried to make my wife feel better. Like, well, your week wasn't as bad as Vince McMahon's. He lost $345 million. At least you didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, but how many millions do you have to pull back on? I've also seen people make the joke, which is obvious. It was all kind of obvious they were going to do it. Hire Paul Heyman. Company goes bankrupt. And I'm like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't think he's in charge of the money. Well, that's funny. <laughs> you got a good thing, I don't know. Yeah, Paul Heyman now needs a t-shirt. Arrive, bankrupt company. Like yes. <laughs> yes. Or I sleep, would... eat, conquer the Wall Street. <laughs> that was just something stupid. But yeah. I... So, so we don't go too wrestling. But over to the catch-up with games we've played this week. Take us away. Pew, pew. Alright. Oh, first off, I finally got around to playing um, 
crap. I still don't know the name of the game. I'm sorry, I'm gonna pop it out right now. Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds. Yeah, it is Link Between Worlds. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I played that, uh, finally. Only for, like, 15 minutes. Oh, Zelda but... fan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, it's not, like... Okay, uh, I, okay, I played it, and it was really fun. I didn't expect it to be fun, because I usually have low expectations when it comes to Zelda on the mobile platform, because I played, what was it, Phantom Hourglass, that was, like, meh. I played uh, the Spirit Tracks, that was, like, I want to tie them both down onto a railroad and run them over with the train. Um, uh, but this one, this one actually seems, you like, should, pretty good. You should, you should like Spirit Tracks, it's the sunshine of Zelda. It's the... <laughs> 1920s villain of like video games. You just want to take it and run them over in a bit of train and hope they die and that's it. Um, but this one it seems really fun. I only played like a little bit of it. I a little bit like um, Awakening or not Awakening, A Link to the Past. My gosh, uh, uh, Link to the Past and the Super Nintendo. Uh, so this should this is should be really fun and. The only thing is sad face is that I, uh, while I was playing it, I closed the thing, uh, closed the DS, and I forgot to save it, and it like died. So I'm gonna have to do it over again. But like, I only played like 15, 20 minutes of it. So can, I, can I tell you, you can't make that mistake with a 2DS. <laughs> yeah, but it would just die anyway, and like, it would still die. Oh, wait, is there a sleep mode on the 2DS? Even if there was, like, there was a sleep mode on here, like because I didn't turn it all the way off, it would still have died eventually. I'm not I just sure. charged it in. It just charged it in like ten minutes ago, so it will like. I'm not sure, but I will say I do plan two DS like around summer with Smash Brothers and stuff. That's yeah, like, that should be cool. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've heard that link between worlds was pretty cool. I mean, I believe we had Marcus Shadow on an XGR talk about that once, and he seemed to like it. Yeah. Uh, also, I've been playing. Uh, Tales of uh, Symphonia, and that's pretty fun too. There was this assassin chick who keeps fighting me, and I wanted to join my party ready, but she keeps running away. And maybe she'll join my party later. She kind of looks like Morgan from uh, Dragon Age, but she's got a different outfit. Sheena. Sheena? Okay. Sheena's the cleavage queen, yeah. Yeah, she, yeah, like I said, she's kind of just like. <laughs> Well, I think that's the name of that tiger blonde chick in um, Bloody War. Um, anyway, <laughs> I don't know. It's the last time I heard that name. But yeah, hope she becomes my party soon. Like main, my main right now is freaking. I don't like Cole. Ever since she's got wings, I mean, she's pretty useless before, but now she's just like I don't know. She's not any better. Like, she's just run her. I don't like her floating around her wings like she's awesome now or something, which she's not. Look at my wings! I'm super mega awesome, but I don't do any better attacks or anything. But and like so, yeah. Just Venus, uh, his sister. <laughs> I was gonna say I understand the main character so, and I Frank. I, I was gonna say I understand that Stacy's talking about like the party, like you get in an RPG. But mm -hmm. whenever she's talking about, yeah, she won't come to my party, and the way she sounds and stuff, it sounds like she's having an actual party for her <laughs> game characters. <laughs> Like, she's, like, just sat there in, like, an empty desk with, like, just a th with 3DS. I'm like, yeah, these are three people at my party. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's my pickle party. Those are my favorite food. I'm not going to ask what you do to those pickles. Eat them? <laughs> okay. No, what else would you? I don't know. I don't know what else you would do with them. Pretend they're yeah. boba fat and feed them to your Starlight pet. <laughs> Ew! That's a good I had to nice think one. about that for a second. What was that, Rick? That was a great explanation. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're for eating only. Yeah, but yeah, those are the games I played. And and cool. And over to Rick. For the okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's going to have several days of rain, followed by days of the fog. And I was playing some more uh, Persona 4 Golden, and I got to this, uh, I thought this part was really cool, but uh, part of the basic premise is whoever this, whoever the villain is, I don't know yet, <clears throat> is basically kidnapping people and throwing them into the TV world, 
And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, after a few days, basically, they die. And uh, so you have to go in and save these people. And <clears throat> part of it is when they go to the world, um, like their, uh, some of their innermost feelings kind of become manifest as like a version of them. And at least the people that you save, they, you know, the, the darker part of themselves says some stuff and they don't, they're like, no, no, you're not part of me. And then when they deny it, it becomes a monster and then you have to beat it up or whatever. But I thought one thing that was really cool was uh, the latest party member I got. <clears throat> he's basically, um, he's like a super like macho man, rough and tumble kind of guy. He beats up biker gangs and stuff. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, when you go to the world, uh, the darker version of himself is uh, in TNA. Not like <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not like um, not like flamboyant, but pretty close to it. <clears throat> and uh, so uh, you know, he's like, "Ooh, we're gonna go spy on men and stuff." And he's like in a the dungeons like a, a, a sauna, and he's running around in like one of those little um, like loincloth things, Japanese loincloths. I believe the and, correct yeah. term is Simon adjacent. Okay, <laughs> but um, I actually thought it was kind of cool the way they did that because it was like the his innermost feelings is that I it seems like you know, it seems very heavily uh, you know um, they're trying to say like that he's like uh, homosexual or something and I thought that was a really cool way to to do it because a lot of times when there's a gay character in the games uh, they're like they're already gay if that makes sense. You know, like, you just, oh, he comes in, he's like, hi, everybody. You're like, oh, okay. But it was kind of neat that through the game, it's like, he's, like, denying it, and then uh, he has to confront it. So it's like a person, like, learning to accept themselves for being gay or something. I was like, that's really well done. I thought that was really cool, and I hadn't seen that before. I shouldn't have been giggling, but when you described <laughs> that as they're already gay, they're just walking like, hello, yeah. everybody, how are you? Yeah. I was so thinking... Is that what gay Commander Shepard's like when he steps on the fucking bridge? Hello! Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Hi Joker! <laughs> oh, Joker, you grab that stick and pilot at home. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> How are you feeling today, Mr. Shepard? I'm super! Thanks for asking! <laughs> I'll be joining him in the cockpit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I just thought that was really cool. <clears throat> And the uh, second game I was playing was, uh, it came out a couple weeks ago, but it's called Bound by Flame. Oh, I so, love that. That's cool. Oh. Yeah, it's a did European you, RPG. Did hmm? you not swap to your headset, Stace? You did my headset. Okay, because you sounded really far away, and it also, before I heard, like, dum 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 as Rick that was speaking. Oh, how is it better? <laughs> it, it sounds the same, but continue, Rick. Okay, but um, it's a pretty cool little game. Uh, basic premise is you're this dude who's uh, like part of a mercenary company, and you accidentally get like a demon <laughs> bound to your body, and uh, which it gives happens. you stuff. yeah, that's normal, par for the course in an RPG. But um, it's uh, the combat's actually pretty fun. It's um, it's a lot more like timing based because like you can attack and stuff, but you definitely need to block and or uh, block the right time to parry a move, you know, to otherwise you'd just get uh, completely beat up because you take a lot of damage. Uh, so it's not like as tough as like something like The Witcher, for example, but it's definitely uh, somewhat difficult. But it's pretty fun. Uh, personally, um, I don't like the, the sword as much. It's slower. I like the daggers. It's really quick and you get an extra dodge move. But it's so far, actually, I'm really liking it. That's cool. I don't like blocking Nice. That sounds kind of cool. Fine. And how did he acquire his demon accidentally? <clears throat> well, uh, the band of mercenaries is basically hired to uh, protect this group called the Red uh, Red Scribes while they're trying to do some ritual. Because the the backstory of the game is that there's uh, like seven. I think they're called like ice lords or whatever, and they have basically like ice zombies, and they're completely overrunning the world and killing everyone because you know if you have an army of zombies if you kill any of the opponents hey look you've replenished some of your stock nice. so some ritual that was supposed to help them combat the ice lords but they they didn't really tell the mercenaries like what all entailed or what happened and 
they summoned up a demon and it just bound itself to the main character. So <laughs> you have to. I'm assuming uh, going to save the world or whatever, but you know the demons sometimes takes control of you and will tell off people. Sounds like a darker version of Adventure Time. Nice. Really yeah. the Battle of the Ice King, you know. <laughs> And that sounds that does sound like a pretty cool concept. Yeah, it is. So far, at least. <laughs> <laughs> so far, until you find out it's all aliens, directed by Michael. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the main character is supposed to be really good at traps, so there are explosions. <laughs> He's really good at traps, which means he can tell when he looks at someone whether or not they're a she-male or a woman. <laughs> <laughs> wrong type of trap sorry <laughs> again what the hell is wrong with these he has, that power to, <laughs> he has the power to channel Admiral Akbar yeah, yeah but the games I've played this week first up played Diablo 3 with Richter himself yep. then I've been trying the Demon Hunter I hadn't tried that class yet a little weird when I was trying to get into the Demon Hunter because I didn't understand what the hell the two bars were for, like the orange, like orange aid and the, like, the great juice <laughs> next to each other. Turn out one taste the ones this The sunny D and the purple stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that needs to be a picture now. <laughs> Fanta. No, it was it was the case of one turned out to be hatred, one turns out to be discipline. And my understanding, hatred is for more. I want to kill you now, and discipline's more for, I'm calm, relaxed, you're going to fall into my trap. But it seems pretty cool. I, I had fun with the Demon Hunter, and we've got up to the Skeleton King so far on those ones, on mm-hmm. these new characters we're playing right now, and we'll be playing again after XGR that will finish this recording today, so woo. Mm. But what, what, what was your thoughts, Rick? Because didn't you try a new class you hadn't been much of? Uh, yeah, I was the monk, which I've been up to 13, so we got around where I was. Um, still, yeah, there's still, I mean, monk's okay. Uh, some of the, I've seen high-level monks, because that's what my wife was using, and they look silly with the armor. But <laughs> And some of their techniques, like, there's the one where they punch the bell. I know that's way farther, but it just seems silly. Like, why Why are they hitting a bell? Like, <laughs> that, that But the ones where they punch are awesome. <laughs> Does that mean, you'll, does that mean away. you'll do what I did with my witch? Uh-huh. When I got high-end with my witch and I completed the game with her, or wizard, as it's called in the game, but I, I, female wizard is a witch. But yeah, basically, I really hated her headpiece that gave me great stats. So I went and got the die that turns it invisible and went, Dook. there you go, no more. It's not on there, but I still get the stats. Mm. I wasn't sure if you were going to do that with the monk arm, but you didn't like it. <laughs> Remove it. Um, I know my wife did. She actually turned off like half of hers, and it looked pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, the helmets are always silly on the monk. There's one that <laughs> it has like a plate over the eyes, and it looks almost cool. But then you realize that this, you know, it's not like a blast shield that you can put up and down. It just <laughs> no, it just looks silly. Does he, but, does um, he at least peel back his face when he goes to talk like I am? I'm like. Ch-ch-ch-ch-ch. That would be <laughs> that'd be awesome. Oh man, then I'd accept it. Not that I know of. <laughs> ah. But that was game number one. Uh, game number two I played this week, which I'm really loving. I'm almost I'm near the end, I think. Prince of Persia: Warrior Within, the sequel to Sands of Time. Because as people know from one of the previous ones, I was getting through those, but I did the Kingdom Hearts first because we're, we're slowly reviewing the Kingdom Hearts ones. So that seemed more time dependent. Uh, I'm playing through the Warrior with it. They've done some great concepts with that. I just did not see. There's like multiple twists in this game. I just did not see coming. Spoilers ahead, but is it really spoilers? It's a PS2 game. <laughs> uh, first, like first of all, it, I was being chased by this big monster called like the Dakor or something, and it turns out he's the guardian of time. So everything I did in the first game resulted in him now wanting to kill me because I messed with my fate and stopped myself dying. So he's like the equalizer, so he's not really a villain. He's just mm. a force, and I'm, I like that. And during the game, I see what looks like... You know Soul Weaver? Oh, yes. It looks like that, but with like the Venom symbiote on it. And I was oh, like, okay. okay, that's kind of cool. Who the hell is this guy? 
and he's he keeps staring at me all the time and stuff like that. And there's a part where he goes to kill me with a knife and it misses and kills one of the other enemies and stuff. Yeah, at the end of the game, it turns out that's me. Because I put this mask on that protects me from the decor. So I put mm. that on so he can't hurt me. And I turn into that. And he's like, wait, I remember this guy. I'm him. And then a few times you replay those exact scenes. And it turns out you didn't miss. You actually aimed. And you're like, I just saved my own life. And I'll never know oh. it. And I'm like, cool. And there's another part where this woman, these two women were fighting like early on in the game. And you walk in and you save one of them from the one that was the obvious enemy. Who had been assaulting you during the tutorial and stuff, and you save her. Mm-hmm. She turns out to be the Empress that you're looking for in another twist, who's also trying to change her time. You actually get to go back when you got the mask on, and you're on the rooftop a bit where he's like, Who the hell is that guy? And he looks up at him. And you, but before that bit, you actually see the argument between those two and why they were fighting and how. Okay, so it wasn't just a case of that was a curveball they threw out for no reason. Those two actually had a reason for fighting and stuff. And I'm like, I like that. It's actually messing with time and it's throwing twists my way. The gameplay is pretty cool. I will say uh, there's some changes that I like, love. Like drinking out the water fountain now makes the save so you don't accidentally mess up some stuff. They've improved combat, which is cool. I don't like the fact... They've changed how some traps work. Like I, like I mentioned to you the other day, Rick, of you're walking across the spike pit on the first mm-hmm. one, you have to sneak across, and that's how it stops the spikes going off. It looks exactly the same in this. You try that, and when you start sneaking, you then realise, oh shit, I should have dodged, I had to roll quickly so I could beat the spikes, because they suddenly <laughs> then come up and start killing you. And it's like, oh god. And now at the end... When I'm in my final, f- what I hope is the final form, and I love this form, you're basically, oh, what the hell's it called now? It's like, a, you're now like the Time Reaper or something like that, and it's awesome where your health keeps going down, but to balance it out as your health constantly goes down, your balls of energy or balls of sand that give you your powers constantly replenish so you keep walking into rooms you're going rah going into berserk mode just eating through enemies it's fucking <laughs> awesome and i'm like i love this mode and also also noticed like i joked with stacy some of these buildings were built really impractical mm-hmm. like when I've now got a basically unlimited energy, most of the traps require me slowing down time, running along the walls and stuff. But no one else can do that besides me. So how the hell did these people get to the office? Who, who the hell does that? If, you know what? I'm going to build a death trap. It's cool. It's cool. Okay, now what what do I want from the death trap? Make sure none of my men can get through the trap. Make sure my sworn enemy can definitely have a clear path to me if he uses his powers. That's what I want for my building. Who builds like that? <laughs> video game buildings, they always make me laugh. How about you, some of the layouts of some video game buildings? It's like, why would you do that? Like, it's like some video games where it's like, oh, here's a ca- here's my ultimate castle, and I'm inside the castle, but you know what? I'm going to put the tool of my destruction just one room away from me. <laughs> why do or you- um, Resident Evil 2, where the police building has, like, uh, keys that are based off of the different suits from cards. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to give my report to the captain, but I don't know where I put the spade key. <laughs> yeah. You're just sitting there, like, <laughs> hitting the door, and he's like, who designed this crap? <laughs> Clearly the guy loved Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> yeah. I, it's like when we were playing Diablo. What kind of a church has, like, free fucking basement levels? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They built the cathedral down, because, yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of like that little cartoon about, oh, who's going to want to buy a key? There's not a job, but I'm going to use one. Danny comes in. I'll buy all the keys! Yeah. <laughs> it's like with Kingdom Hearts, where I was playing through Kingdom Hearts, and it's like, so you know, at this certain point, I'm going to get these powers, like Glide and stuff, because I've done all this other stuff. Why is this the end world? I always wonder that with some video games. If, okay, so you have the tools to beat me before I learn the powers to stop you. Attack me sooner. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I do. I mean, if I was a villain, I wouldn't be like, okay, so this guy's going to attack me. You know what? Let's let him learn all his powers and then let him come after me. 
You know, <laughs> that won't be my downside. <laughs> and hey, here's an idea, hero, what's that? I've got a one week spot on my body, so I'm going to constantly highlight it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> but well, that needs to be a topic, like, next week or the week afterwards or some shit of stupid video game logic. Because I think we could just have fun with that. What do you reckon? Yeah, that would be pretty funny. <laughs> so there we go, next week, video game logic. <laughs> but now on to our main topic. Hyrule Warriors, or Zelda Musou. Musou. Musawi. Musou. Rick? Musou? I don't know, you're our Japanese guy. <laughs> I would just say... You're, you're yeah. the best Asian on the X-Pound... <laughs> How do you pronounce that? Musso. Thank you. Ah, like Tommy Musso. Yes. Director of the room. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's no. Why? Why are they making these stupid references? <laughs> Hyrule, Hyrule was so. <laughs> they just throw footballs around. It's time me apart, Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Ganon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Ganon. <laughs> That needs to be a thing. But no. <laughs> <laughs> Hyrule Warriors, Zelda... Damn, I forgot. Mo, Musou, Musou. You, yeah. in Japan, is it called. Is developed <laughs> by, I believe it's W-Force. The W may be silent, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> in brackets it says, called Omega Force. Who knew the W yeah. was a sort of for Omega? I thought O oh, was a sort of... Okay. My bad. And Team Ninja with supervision from Zelda series. They've announced some new stuff to do with this, like... Famitsu revealed a variety of information of the upcoming game. As translated on NeoGAF, the story will cast Link as a soldier in training that must rescue Princess Zelda from the Witch Shia, I believe it's called. Hyrule Warriors will include a two-player mode that will utilize the Wii U gamepad as a separate screen. So it will have local if you want. Hmm. doesn't say online, though. No, that's, 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 I want online. Equipping different weapons will change the way characters will fight as well, and it will feature a weapon upgrade system for character growth. The game is described as a Dynasty Warriors style of action, combined with the series Z targeting, whatever that means, so mm. a player can avoid attacks and focus on enemy weak spells. Oh, so that's what I that's what, okay. As shown in the reveal trailer, bombs will make an appearance, but they've said they won't be used in com uh, as a combat item. Impa, a captain of the Royal Army, will appear as a playable character as well, wielding a giant longsword. Several other characters will also be playable. Hyrule Warriors will be playable at E3 this year, and the game is now 70% complete according to the article. It was initially revealed via Nintendo Direct, as we all remember, back in 2013, and it's scheduled to be released in Japan on August 14th. The Japanese version will also be available as part of a premium set, which comes with a Triforce-shaped clock and a serial code for six special costumes. And, of course, Nintendo has not announced the release date or any pre-order bonuses or anything for Western territories. Yeah. I'm all glad for America. And it also, I want to release on the same day because that's one day before my birthday, so it'll be a birthday present to me. <laughs> I hope it doesn't. Yeah. I hope it gets released two or three months afterwards. <laughs> so for your birthday, you get disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> like every other year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like when she had sex with Jim. No. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, poor Jim. No, but what do you guys think about what was announced? Uh, I don't know. I will admit I don't know who Impa, the captain of a royal army, is. I don't remember him. The girl and the guardian. Okay, fair enough. It's a girl and a guardian. If I remember correct, well, I I probably have this mostly wrong, but I believe she helped train Zelda, and uh, that's like with the Sheik persona. It was the stuff that Impa taught her. I believe. Uh -huh. Fair enough. You're really quiet, Stace. I think her training should be like a whole own... If she trained her, she should have started from the beginning, because what happened beforehand? Did she start training her after she had to run away? I mean... There you go. What was she doing before? Now we can hear you. What the hell? Why were you so quiet before? I don't know. 
It, it sounds like you're using an inbuilt mic. Is it? I think. Oh, my microphone is set to inbuilt, but the speaker is not. Um. <laughs> oh, okay. That's. How about now? There you go. Now you sound as normal as you can sound. Okay. That's why, because it used the headphones for, like, speakers, but not the microphone. That was weird. I don't know why that happened. Fair enough. But, yeah, like I said, what what does everyone think about what was in, what was announced there with the, up, like, the upgrade system and stuff? Because I know Rick did play the Dynasty Warrior games more, so yeah. he may know what to expect from that. Uh, if it's similar to the other ones, it should be pretty good, because a lot of times you can uh, equip different skills on them. Which will give you either elements on your attack or up different stats or, you know, let you attack faster or whatnot. Uh, Does that mean the Master Sword will be an upgrade? Maybe. Or it might be, um... Well, they also have different, like, levels of weapons. So they might, for, let's say, for his sword, they might have, like, the whatever that first crappy sword he gets. And then, like, maybe the Silver Sword, if anyone remembers the original. And then... Maybe the Master Sword will be like an up. So, like, it'll be a type of weapon, and then just the strongest one within that type will be the Master Sword. Nice. I'm all, I, I like the idea of it. They say different. you can equip different weapons, and it changes how your character fights. Like, I could totally see, like, Link from the games I've played. Like I said, I'm not a massive Zelda fan by any stretch of the imagination, but I do enjoy a couple of games. But. I could so see Link being either a sword and shield guy or being an archer or something like that, like his crossbow training game that used the Wii Zapper. Mm. Wow, that's such an odd game to bring up when discussing Zelda, but still, his crossbow training, we all remember that game, that hidden little gem, but who could, I could see him being like a ranged one with a crossbow or like on Nintendo Land with a crossbow or using a sword and shield and that could dramatically change two different styles right there. Hmm. I think my favorite part was uh, where they they used the word character, but plural. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm really hoping that they have a good amount of characters. Impa's definitely a good start. Uh, I'm, of course, always pulling for Old Manendorf to be in there. But I think Old it's Manendorf. actually... Old Manendorf. Old Manendorf. But yeah, that actually does sound cool that the weapon type determines your fighting style, which is kind of like what the Dynasty Warriors are like. But it sounds also awesome that, yeah, you're not limited by your character. So if you want to use... Link, like you're just, I, I need to use Link, but I need a different weapon. You can actually get a different weapon, and I think that's awesome that it's not really tied to the character. Yeah. I'm hoping, like, I believe Dynasty Warriors Gundam did this. I don't know if any of the other ones did, where they have different versions of the same character. Mm -hmm. I kind of think that would be cool as well. Like, So more than one of you could play as Link. Like, you could go, I don't know, Link as in how he is in like Skyward Sword or mm. modern day Link. I could go Toon Link and join you by your side as like a little chibi Link next to you. That'd be amazing. That would be cool. Also, I like the fact there's strong females in Zelda Life with Impa. Because Zelda's kind of been slacking a bit. <laughs> so he got at least one of them. Yeah, but that also means if it's saying soldier in training that must rescue Princess Zelda from the Witch Shea. Does that effectively mean she won't be playable because Zelda's kidnapped? Well, <laughs> she's kidnapped, so she should help you help Link um get her back. That would make sense. Yeah, but isn't she Zelda? Oh, sorry, she. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking Inca, Impa will help um you get um yeah, Zelda back. Say, how, and can that would she, be how can she help save herself? <laughs> well, you know, like she. Pretty much, either she wears a strap on, or man, she goes through some serious stuff to change. Because if you look at she, man, she's definitely got the parts to, you know, be different than Zelda. I like the chic persona from what I've seen on the different stuff. Cause I, I kind of like it. It's sort of like when Samus was in the suit and it was a big thing of, oh my god, that was a chick. Mm. It's kind of cool because she, it's like. It's unisex. It doesn't. They're not making them like bright pink mm. or girly just for the sake of it. They make them unisex of something that could be a man or a woman. Yeah, or Simon. You know. Yeah. I'm hoping it's got online. I'm hoping it does have online multiplayer. I do want to join like Rick and stuff online with that. I'm probably. That'd be fun. Sure you'll probably end up getting that. Yeah, definitely. That'd be awesome. Well, I'm hoping that, like, even if Zelda's kidnapped, that um, 
like maybe beating Link's story unlocks her, so you can still use her as a character, just maybe not in story mode. Ah, uh, yeah, or multiplayer may yeah, give you characters yeah. that weren't actually canon <coughs> with the story like you've had in some games. Yeah. But uh, according to my <coughs> friend uh, who told me about Impa like uh, earlier today, I think, um, <coughs> I was like, yeah, I hope they have other people, and he said that uh, a Nintendo guy was, quote, surprised at how many playable characters there were in the game, so here's hoping that it's actually more than, like, three. <laughs> <laughs> see, I could totally see a Nintendo guy being like, wait, you got three playable characters? What? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> He's like, wow, we topped out with four on Mario Brothers 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, like I said, different versions of Link could be cool as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, and like that, I, mean, I want to know what that weapon upgrade system is going to be like. I, I don't mean to be insulting with this, Stace, but mm-hmm. I don't see the. I, although it could be, I don't see the Zelda games being as in depth as the Dynasty Warrior series. I see them being like a slight. I see this game being slightly easier than the Dynasty Warrior games. If that makes sense. Makes um. sense. It's like it's like. I mean, I, I, like I said, I enjoy some of the Legend of Zelda's, like, I love, like, Wind Waker, and I, I also enjoyed Ocarina of Time and stuff, but they're not exactly, they're not as in-depth as other games that are very similar, because they're normally more RPG-ish, if that makes mm. sense. Mm-hmm. It does. And like I said, 70% complete, woo! Which means we woo! should see a lot of information to do about a V3. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Playable. Well, considering it was, uh, it was only a couple months ago, right, when they first actually showed off the game. I'm surprised it's yeah, that December. complete. But I'm guessing. Well, I mean, I guess Tecmo Koei does. <laughs> as much as I like their games, they don't change a whole lot year to year. So I could see if they already had like the bases, you know, like the infrastructure from the games. Just uh, adding the actual Zelda stuff could probably not take that long. But yeah, here's hoping E3 or PAX they show a lot of that more at that game. Yeah, it's meant to be. Yeah. Like said, it's meant to be playable at E3 this year, and nice. the other reason for that, is they showed off in December and stuff. The other reason for that is, and I don't mean bad or good but with this, but Nintendo doesn't do what a lot of companies do. Where they're like, yeah, this game's gonna be in production in four, three or four years time. Here's, oh yeah. Here's a photo. They don't only wait until they've got something to show you, and then that means there's less time in between the announcement and when it comes out. Like, it was only, like, last year they announced Mario Kart 8. Yeah, it's true. And according to all the reviews, that's meant to be awesome. I think most times, I think some Japanese developers are actually... They develop it for a lot longer than they say. And then once they actually show it, it's, yeah, it's a lot farther along. Where I think a lot of times Western developers are like, Oh, yeah, we just started this game. And people are like, that looks cool. And then it's like, yeah, four years (laughs) before it comes out. Yeah. It's like, for example... Uh, I've seen that. I've seen people do that so many times, and I've seen both people do that as well. Like, yeah, at E, like at E3, what was it? Like a year, two years ago, we got the Kingdom Hearts three teaser. Oh, yeah. basically told you nothing, and the game's not even out this year. I don't think. <laughs> it was pretty much, hey, we exist. Goodbye, run away. Yeah. It's happening. And what the fuck was that with Dark yeah. Sorcerer? I don't even know what the yeah. hell that game is, but I want it because it, I'll admit, I'll admit it was kind of funny, but. Like, they're still talking about Destiny. How long have they been talking about that piece of crap? And I don't mean... <laughs> that one sounds like a, a negative thing, but if you're offended by that, then... Yeah. I, I don't know what to say. It's a piece of crap. It's Halo <laughs> repackaged. Yeah. But... Uh, I I do seem to notice that with, like, this. Like, they announced Hyrule Warriors, and it's like, yeah! They announced Smash Bros. as it comes out this year. And... There's so many times Nintendo does that where they show yeah. like a little teaser and boom. Or like I didn't even know they were making Pokemon Omega Ruby and Super Mega Awesome Sapphire or whatever the <laughs> fuck it's called. But boom, they've suddenly got box art and shit for it and all, all information yeah. coming out in video. That's kind of cool. I will admit, I don't know which one I prefer though because sometimes I do like to know, okay, this game's coming out. But other times... I prefer the Nintendo approach due to the fact I've had it before now, like Freddy v Jason the game or the new Pirates of the Caribbean game they were Disney were making that looked awesome with the concept art and shit cancelled. Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah. Well, if the game's canceled, I like to see what they have of it. Yeah. So I can I can know if I can be sad, but I actually do prefer the Nintendo approach of it. You know, by the time they start building up hype, it's actually closer to coming out rather than like you see something and then like a year or two later they show another trailer and you're like, oh yeah, that game. <laughs> but you're allowed to be sad. You're the sad gamer. That's true. It's in the title. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I, yeah, I, I do agree with that. It's like they showed off, like I mentioned, the Pirates of the Caribbean game. From the looks of it, it looked like Fable with boats. Mm. And whether or not you like Fable or not, I don't, I don't know. But I, I enjoyed Fable One. It looked like Fable One, kind of with a bit of Bioware thrown in with boats and shit. They were from pirates and all that. I was like, that looks awesome. The, what you're telling me about this game is awesome. Cancelled. I was like, what? <laughs> Why? Why have you cancelled it? <laughs> Although sometimes Nintendo shows stuff and then they... It is later than what they wanted yeah. to Yeah. Like Yoshi's Yarn or Yarn Yoshi, whatever it's called. Mm. I haven't heard any new information about that. Though I probably will end up buying that despite not really caring for Yoshi. <laughs> Epic Yarn was cool, so... Yeah, yeah Kirby's Epic Yarn was kind of cool. But I did like how um Kirby was the villain in that, which made me happy. That was cool. Yeah. <laughs> but is Z targeting just being able to focus on one particular spot? It's cool. It's good. It's useful. No, I mean, is that what Z targeting? Oh yeah, is? that's what it is. It was Cause... yeah, just it was basically a target lock while you held Z. That's good oh for... okay. Because the N64 one, the Z button was on the bottom, and that's what you use, so they just call it Z targeting because of that. <laughs> ah, fair enough. I, I hadn't heard that term before, but when I read it, I was like, but so many games do that. Like, you can do it on God of War and all sorts of games that you can, like, target a specific limb and stuff. Yeah. Well, you can do that on the wrestling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, <fair> yes. <laughs> it's just a fancy name for target lock. <laughs> yeah. But it means the Zelda for two. Specific one, okay. Yeah. Wait, could it be Z for Zelda? No. <gasps> no, I'm pretty sure because it was the button. Yeah. <laughs> was the button, could the button maybe, be named after yes, Zelda? Yeah, but they, with, they named the button after Zelda, true. Yeah, they named the button after <laughs> Zelda. Where's the M button? I want my mouse. That's what button. they're renaming uh, plus and minus. That's what <laughs> the minus, the M is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, goodbye, start and select. I know. Oh, I'm so sad about that. I want to, like, buy controllers and, like, scratch it off and, like, emboss it on there or yeah. something. No, like, I'll fix this problem myself. Yeah, no, I, I will, really want I, my freaking start button on my PlayStation controller. Yeah, I will admit, playing on PS4, playing a game that I've seen also on PS3 at the same time, I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I kind of see what you've done here. It's got the same functionality. I'll admit it has the same functionality. They've not stole functionality. Like you can use the touchpad to use select on some games, and you can use right. the options for some stuff. But I just missed the name start and select. It was so simple. Yeah. Start equals pause. <laughs> select equals other shit. <laughs> yeah. Other shit. <laughs> yeah, like in games, normally select pulls up a map. But it's like... I, I just miss Start and Select. I don't know why. It's, it might just be uh, <coughs> me, but I kind of miss them. I miss, I them. miss them. I hate it on the Xbox one where it's like, it's back, and I'm like, no, it's Select. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. It's like I also miss being able to use the D-pad for movement in games. That might be a, that might just be me, but I really prefer using it, the D-pad to sticks. Depends on the game for me. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll admit, like, most modern 3D games do work, but yeah. I do like it on, like, a, a 2D Sonic. Or, oh, yeah, 2D uh, D-pad is so much better. Or fighting games like Street Fighter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely with a with a fighting game, if if you prefer controllers, D-pad is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Or the D movement is Zelda call. <laughs> <laughs> the, the D movement. The D movement. Uh, but no, like uh, um, it looks cool. Uh, like like I said, I want to know what the different weapons are. Kind of do. Uh, but what do you think about the idea? Well, we know of... two of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's the master sword and shield, and whatever Impa's giant sword is. Overcompensation. Yeah. Oh, do you think they'll have for the? Uh, I just thought of this stupid joke. But for the Zelda, or for Link's, excuse me, do you think one of the alternate ones will be right-handed Link? 
<laughs> and that'll, nice. that'll be left-handed and right-handed link <laughs> to make everyone happy. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> but, uh, I what do you, what do you guys feel? Because you guys, like I said, you guys are big as Zelda fans of me. What do you guys feel about the, like I said, the story will cast Link as a soldier in training. Has he ever been a soldier well, because... before? Or because isn't he normally just a dude Adventure. that random shit happens to? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. But this makes sense because it's like you know how he gets like training or something, or why he's so good, or you know, it makes sense that he would have like some training or have like in between stage between like night and you know, like fall out like hero. Does that also mean because of how he dresses, which is totally a rip off of Peter Pan, but how he dresses, does that mean that's gonna be the military uniform? Will we get to see like? You know, like Payday, where you got like big ass Dallas with the muscles and shit. Where we get to see like like torn off Zelda, like a, a big muscular guy, like torn off sleeves and like the Link outfit. <laughs> That'd be amazing if like that was like the standard green. Now is like the actual uniform. That that would be cool. I also want to know: is there actually going to be some exploration in these games for like finding treasure chests and opening them and retrieving items and shit? Or is it just going to be more like Dynasty Warriors to just each through enemies? I wasn't sure if they're also going to include more <laughs> Zelda elements, if that makes sense. I mean, I'm sure there's I... so much exploration in, in like, <clears throat> Dynasty Warriors, but you, you knew what I meant, I hope. What if you yeah. could be like all the races and stuff, and be like Zoras and like shoot people or Gorons and roll people up and kill them or something? Or, like, that'd be what, super so awesome. You could be all the races. What, so your Link Blend Edition? <laughs> no, I'm saying like 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 you can have like the Zoras like have like range attacks on their fins and stuff, and like the Gorons they just like smash shit or eat it or like roll it. And I'm just saying like they could have like a whole bunch of different shit to go with. That'd be really cool. And the friggin' Dikus they got like slingshots and you know the nose mouth like holes that shoot stuff and like floating and bombs and like all cool stuff. But. Like, like I said, the game looks kind of cool. All of us are excited for it. And yes. I think this year for XGR, we will probably also do what we did last year and do multiple E3 ones on mm. some weeks. If you guys are up for it. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Will, will we also be getting Rick... Will we also be getting Sad from PAX again? Hopefully. If they sell the badges, they they updated it where it's like... Oh, the passes aren't available yet, so I have it like on a a tab constantly open, and I refresh it like probably every hour. <laughs> nice. When is it the meant to go on sale? Do they actually have a specific date? No, they did. They don't have a specific date for when they're gonna put them up. That's stupid. Yeah. That's. I don't mean that in a bad way, but well, I kind of do. But that's stupid. I'm always used to like conventions and stuff saying our tickets go on sale from this date and that's the yeah. date everyone goes to refresh the page and shit. That would be just nice. keep checking us, come on. We're cool, keep checking us. <laughs> they don't yeah, but <laughs> they don't stop people from buying a group of five and then buying another group of five, so like by hitting the back button <laughs> to <laughs> get past the limit. They don't care about that, so I don't think they care about if people can actually get passes. Yeah. They sell out, that's all they care about. Yep. Uh, but no, uh, thank you for joining us for this discussion on Hyrule Warriors and the look at the week's news and catch up. Uh, again, I was your host, Chris A. Kid Mole. I was joined by Pew Pew and Richter. See ya.